Hello, my name is Rick Pearson, and this is Prophecy USA, a program specifically designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. You know, the Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. But what does faith have to do with end time prophecy? The answer to that is a lot. Stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Well, my wife and I would like to welcome you to Prophecy USA. Uh, Karen, this is our second TV Q&A program uh, addressing some of the questions from our weekly Thursday Night Bible Study podcast. It is. And this week, we are answering questions from Episode 5 talking about spiritual dynamics happening in America and around the world. Uh, you know, in previous lessons... Uh, we looked at 53 descriptions of a latter-day nation called Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great is the seventh of eight providential kingdoms in history that Scripture says will rise and fall in consecutive order. Now thus far, six have fallen and seven are yet to be revealed. However, the United States already meets every biblical description of that seventh nation. And most people can relate with the fact that America has risen to great power and wealth based on her economic policies of capitalism. However, behind the scenes of capitalism is the biblically-based concept of the work ethic. Adam was told that after he fell, he would have to work by the sweat of his brow. And part of that work ethic has to do with faithfully obeying God's commandments and following biblical protocol. And we believe that formula has brought America to a great position of leadership around the world. Paul said, if a man will not work, he shall not eat. And unfortunately, although America has become a great country, because of her work ethic and following certain biblical protocol, Scripture foretells that she will fall into darkness and become the habitation of every foul and unclean spirit. And many think this is happening right now in our nation. But not everybody in Babylon falls into the pride that seduces her. There's a remnant of people who understand the hidden mystery of America's role in prophecy. And because of their faith, they will be delivered. And that faith will carry them through the last days of Babylon's existence right to the day of her final demise. However, those who have no faith no belief or no desire to understand scripture will fall into the darkest time in history that envelops Babylon and the rest of the world. And everyone has the ability to hear, but not everyone has the desire to listen. So stay tuned and listen to this. The Bible tells us that in 2 Timothy, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Romans 15 verse 4 says, For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction. In previous episodes, we have discussed the fall of Lucifer from heaven before man was created. Current evangelical theology believes that Satan is still an adversary today, opposing anything and anyone who would follow after the ordinances of the Father. Jesus taught his disciples, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. In historical Babylon of 602 BC, King Nebuchadnezzar fell into the same trap as Lucifer when after being empowered by God to build the great city of Babylon, he said, 
Is not this great Babylon which I have built by my mighty power as a royal residence and for the glory of my majesty? But while the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, the kingdom is departed from you. Scripture says at that same hour, Nebuchadnezzar fell mentally ill with a rare clinical illness psychiatrists call bonethropy. Scripture says they drove him from his dwelling and they made him eat grass like a beast for a period of seven years. The Bible says even Nebuchadnezzar's hair grew as eagle's feathers and his nails like bird's claws. Although this happened in ancient Babylon of 600 BC, according to scripture, many people within the seventh nation would follow the example of King Nebuchadnezzar. People would begin to take God out of the equation of their lives and believe the lie that their wealth and prosperity was created by their own wisdom and intelligence. Concerning Babylon the Great of Latter Days, Scripture says, Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee, and thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. Sit thou silent, and get thee into darkness, O daughter of Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called thy Lady of Kingdoms. Fallen is Babylon the Great, for she has become the habitation of demons, a hold of every foul, unclean spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. It would appear from these scriptures that the same principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness that overtook ancient Babylon would find their way into Babylon the Great of the latter days. According to scripture, once Babylon the Great is removed, they will be given a seven-year period on earth with the beast, the eighth kingdom, to rule as they choose, and it will be the darkest time of mankind's existence. However, before that happens, they will first appear in Babylon the Great, and it will be obvious to those who understand the signs of the time. Welcome back, folks. You know, that's some amazing scripture that we just heard. But you know, there are a multitude of comments and questions coming in, Karen. And so let's get right into it with our very first question. All right, we have a question from Diane. Diane said, on program three, your documentary talked about the fall of Lucifer and the war between good and evil in the world. I have watched your programs and find it extremely troubling what is happening in America, according to scripture. What are you personally doing to prepare for what is coming? Well, that's a great question uh, from Diane. Mm -hmm. You know, Diane, uh, recently I was in a coffee shop and as the waitress swiped my credit card, I said, you know, someday you'll be sweeping, probably swiping people's hands to read a chip. And she said, oh, yeah, I, I believe that. And I said, I do too, because it's in the Bible. And she asked, do you read the Bible? And I said, yes, I do. And she said, why do you read the Bible? And I responded, because it inspires me to become a better person. Oh, okay, she said, well, that's a good thing. I said, of course it is, because I need all the help I can get. <laughs> you know, I just planted a seed in that girl's head. Reading the Bible inspires you to be a better person. And wherever you go, whoever you meet, is a potential for your ministry. An opportunity to plant seed faith into people's lives, a word of comfort, a word of exhort, a word of edification. John 10.10 10 says the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Each of us, on an individual basis, constantly fights deadly negative, harmful thoughts and emotions. And this is not only an emotional battle, but it's rooted in our spirits. And to be spiritually sound requires a substance that the Bible calls faith. For we walk by faith and not by sight. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had the testimony that he pleased God. You know, we have to remember it was his faith in God that let him become the first person ever to be raptured 
or translated into heaven. And in the last days, God has promised us the very same experience. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. But what exactly is faith? And how do you recognize it? In Erdman's Bible Dictionary, it's, it says that to have faith means to become steadfast and acquire stability. When a person walks by faith, they become steadfast or stable. They're not tossed to and fro by their emotions. Fear, anxiety, uncontrolled anger has no effect on them. Why? Because they trust in God and His Word. Romans 8, 6 says, To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Focusing your faith on God's promises produces life and peace. Not focusing on faith, you can become filled with anxiety and fear, hopelessness. But why is that? Because the carnal mind is at enmity against God. It's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you're not in the flesh, you're in the spirit. Remember in Babylon, the 27th description concerning her fall is Romans 1 describes a reprobate society. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Now, reprobate means that you cannot discern between good and evil. In America and around the world, we're having a culture war. It's faith versus faithless societies. And in the natural, we have progressives, conservatives, Republicans, and Democrats. But in the spirit realm, you have only two divisions. God's Holy Spirit and Satan's unholy spirits. And spirits operate through people's souls. Your soul is a conductor of spirits, just like copper is a conductor of electricity inside a wire. You can flick the switch and let whatever thoughts, attitudes, and opinions flow through your soul, and they will manifest through your actions and your speech. Everyone fights these deadly negative emotions today. In fact, even Jesus, when he turned unto Peter, said, Get thee behind me, Satan. Peter was operating through anger, fear, and revenge. Satan operates through fear, anxiety, oppression, aggression, and hatred. But God operates through faith, love, joy, peace, and compassion. A reprobate's mindset is operating on, global, on the global scale. The global elites want a world without God, and according to Scripture, they will eventually get one. And those folks aren't coming. They're already here. They're operating through senators, congressmen, mayors, governors, and especially through the voters who empowered those platforms. So what am I doing to repair? I'm believing in God's word and standing on his promises and trying to walk daily to hear his voice, act, speak, and release my faith. Wherever I am is my ministry. Whoever I talk to is my assignment. You don't need a platform and you don't need a podium. Just be willing to be a secret agent of the Most High God, planning words to edify, comfort, and exhort one another wherever you go. So stay tuned because we have many more questions just like Diane's. The United Nations has a 2030 agenda. The World Economic Forum has a great reset. The COVID-19 pandemic has an accelerated mandate. But as the new world order plans their world without God, nothing will be accelerated faster than the prophetic word God has spoken to the United States of America. It will be the hour that changes everything. Prophecy USA is proud to present their latest book, 
the hour that changes everything. Together with our study guide and free app, prepare yourself for one of the greatest events in Bible prophecy. Go to prophecyusa.org or call the number on your screen now to make your donation of $35 or more and receive your copy of the book, The Hour That Changes Everything. We are waiting to hear from you. Call today. Welcome back, folks. We're talking about faith and how it can determine your destiny. Karen, we have some more questions on that. We do. Uh, John wrote in and he said, in program five, Rick, you talked about the fall of America. As a person in their 70s, I cannot believe what is happening in America. But since listening to your teaching, everything is starting to make sense. How far will America fall before God judges her? Wow, that's quite a question, Karen. You know, even Jesus said, no man knows the day or the hour of his return. But we were given signs to watch for. And Matthew 24 says, but of that day and hour, no man knoweth, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Now, in that chapter, Jesus talked about what most prophecy teachers repeat. Wars, rumors of wars, pestilence, knowledge shall increase, but these are generic signs because this has happened progressively in every generation. However, one of the greatest signs of his coming is the revelation of who Mystery Babylon the Great is. If you can remember in Deuteronomy 29, 29, it says the secret things belong to the Lord, but the things he reveals unto us belong to us and to our children. Now, secret things are mysteries. And mysteries is described in Greek as a secret revealed to a small group of people. Knowledge increased is directly tied to Daniel's revelation for the very last days. None of the wicked will understand, but the wise will understand the signs of the times that they're living in. So if we're at the time of the end, what do we understand that no other generation has understood? Mystery Babylon the Great will no longer be a mystery to a select group of people. Now, why do I say that? Because in description four, it says she appears before the Antichrist and the 10 nations emerge. Now, that's out of our study guide. We have 53 descriptions. Number five, She's recognized by the world with the symbol of a woman. And number six, she's the wealthiest of all nations. And verse 17 says she falls spiritually in God's eyes. And just like John has observed, in Isaiah 47, she is literally driven into darkness. Which is why we embrace the 47th description she has written warnings in scripture to come out of her, my people, and partake not in her sins nor in her plagues. 48 says she's a verb, she has verbal warnings not to participate. You're receiving a verbal warning right now. And she has prophets within her before her destruction. So how close are we from God's judgment on mystery Babylon the Great and the rapture of the church? I received this revelation in 1986. So we're 35 years closer than the day I first heard about it, John. And believe me, it wasn't on TV getting spoon-fed with multiple scriptures to back the rhema. It was absolutely overwhelming when I received this revelation. Even Daniel said, I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit, in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. So if my teaching about America is troubling you, I totally understand your mindset, and you are not alone. You should have been there when I heard it, John. Mm. Folks, we're much closer to the second coming than many people realize, and I can hardly wait to see him appear. So how can we prepare? Your faith has a lot to do with it. So stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Hey folks, have you ever been witnessing to somebody and you just can't remember verses or recall the 
eight providential nations in scripture, let alone how America meets all 53 descriptions of the seventh nation in Bible prophecy? Well, now Prophecy USA has a free app and every TV program, podcast, and all 53 descriptions of America's role in Bible prophecy will be in the palm of your hand. Together with our study guide, you can study to show thyself approved at any time, any place, and at any given moment. You can even upload the app onto your friend's phone or iPad and let them find out for themselves where this generation fits on God's prophetic time clock. To get the free app, go to prophecyusa.org. And for a donation of $20 or more, we will include a 100-page study guide boldly proclaiming America's role in Bible prophecy. 4,000 years ago, an Antichrist religion was birthed in ancient Babylon. Yet Joshua overcame it, Gideon overturned it, Elijah overwhelmed it, and Josiah overthrew it. This vile religion demands a rejection of God's commandments, a defiance of God's morals, a resurgence of asterisk poles with rampant immorality, and the shedding of innocent blood that cries out for judgment. These are the signs of a nation seduced by Baal worship. But what is the answer? 2,000 years ago, innocent blood was shed for you. But will America come back? Will she seek God's forgiveness or will she suffer His judgment? Prophecy USA proudly presents a study guide addressing America's spiritual state of the union concerning her past, present, and future role in Bible prophecy. Call right now with your donation of $20 or more to receive your copy, 1-888-306-1759, or go online to prophecyusa.org right now. Welcome back, folks. We're talking about your faith and how it plays a big part in the end times. Now, Karen, we have some more questions. What, what's our next question? The next question I have is from Linda, who says, I believe America is Mystery Babylon. I don't think we were at the rapture yet, but we're on our way. God prepares those who care and keep faithful on the front lines. Bless you, Prophecy USA, for enforcing what some of us already knew. Thank you, Linda. Isn't that we, encouraging? We appreciate that. But Mary Beth also wrote in. Okay. And she wanted to say, I've watched a bunch of your Thursday night podcasts, and they are so good. People don't understand they need to be rapture ready. Okay, rapture ready. Uh, that's, that's exactly what we're talking about. How can a person's faith help them to become rapture ready? Or how can it determine their destiny? If you've ever studied the rapture or the catching away of believers, there's one thing certain. There's definitely going to be a rapture. But the timing is what is disputed among theologians. Some believe everyone will go through the tribulation, and others believe we will be caught away and not suffer God's wrath. Now, Karen and I are voting for pre-trib rapture. <laughs> In Numbers gives you a life lesson. It says, before the children of Israel went into the promised land, God told Moses to send 12 Jewish spies into the land to spy it out. Joshua and Caleb said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went with them said, we are not able to go up against these people, they are stronger than we are. Remember, these people had already witnessed the ten plagues of Egypt. The Israelites saw the pillar of fire and the parting of the Red Sea, and now they were confessing with their mouths that God was not able to deliver them. And we already learned in previous lessons that without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. We also know that faith is a substance, and according to Romans 10, chapter 8, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is, the word of faith which we preach. So how did God deal with the doubting Israelites? 
He said, how long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be that they believe me for all the signs which I have showed amongst them? You know, according to Scripture, their lack of faith and proclaiming that lack of faith caused God to be so provoked that he said, Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. But God allowed Caleb and Joshua to go into the promised land. Forty years later, that generation died. But Joshua and Caleb lived and led the charge into the promised land. So what are you confessing? There are five verses that show believers in the tribulation. They're martyred, they're slain, they're beheaded, and they come into heaven while the marriage supper is already taking place. But at the same time, there's a multitude of verses promising believers an open door of escape where they'll be caught away or raptured before the tribulation begins. In fact, the most glaring time sequence of the rapture in Scripture is found immediately after the destruction of Mystery Babylon the Great. And after these things, the destruction of Babylon, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife hath made herself ready. Now we already know that Babylon is destroyed at the beginning of the tribulation, which initiates the outpouring of God's wrath upon the whole earth. Wrath that is not intended for those who like Joshua and Caleb, love God, obey Him, and trust in His Word to deliver them. So what is found in your mouth? What are you confessing? Faith or doubt? Are your words pleasing to God? Or are they provoking God? Do you believe that God will provide an open door of escape? Or are you like the five foolish virgins who provoked the Lord to anger and they missed the open door of the bridegroom's appearing? You know, Karen and I have studied this thoroughly. And as for we in our house, we are voting pre-trib rapture all the way. We're confessing these verses with our mouth. We're standing on these verses in our faith and in our heart. And we hope that you will join us. In fact, all you have to do is pray this prayer with us. Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, and let me lead a life that is pleasing unto you. Folks, we're out of time. We hope you prayed that prayer and let us know if you did. But we're out of time. And now this is Prophecy USA. This is Rick and Karen Pearson. And we're believing for you and reminding you that Jesus Christ is alive and he's coming back much sooner than many people think. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Shalom.